Electro, in Greek, means electricity. Cardio, stands for heart. While graph is derived from a Greek root, which means, to write. Hence, ECG can be defined as recording of heart's electrical activity, on a graph paper. In this series, we will learn all the important things regarding an ECG, which would help in quick and correct interpretation of any ECG report. The series will include basics, procedure, anatomical positioning of the leads, and the 10 important steps of ECG evaluation, which I have mentioned above. The purpose of an ECG includes identification of various pathological conditions, such as MI, chest pain and dysrhythmias, Baseline ECG before surgery for later comparison or for routine comparison of current electrical activity of the heart after a condition is identified. It is gold standard for diagnosis of cardiac arrhythmias, but it is also helpful with non-cardiac diseases, for example, pulmonary embolism and hypothermia. However, it's important to note that ECG is a diagnostic tool, not a treatment. Begin with washing hands thoroughly. Then, ask your patient to undress. Shoes must be removed, while socks and trousers could be rolled down to reach the lower legs. The patient should be positioned flat or in a semi-recumbent position, as comfortable. If the patient's skin is dirty, clean it with soap and water, and then dry. Patients with chest hairs should have hairs at the electrode placement site removed. If the skin is oily, or if the patient applied any cream or ointment. Use an alcohol wipe to clean. Our goal is to obtain a 12-lead ECG. The 12 leads are lead 1, 2, and 3. AVR, AVL, and AVF. Lead V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6. For recording these 12 leads, we need a total of 10 electrodes, out of which 4 electrodes are placed on all 4 limbs. Hence, they are known as limb leads or limb electrodes while six are placed on chest, hence called precordial leads. They are V1 to V6, so there are actually 10 leads used in a 12-lead ECG. 10 leads provide 12 views of the heart. You must be wondering, how would 10 leads give a reading of 12? Well I'll answer that shortly, but for now, let's continue with the procedure. Try to do an ECG from the patient's left side, if possible, so that you don't have to lean over the patient. Next step is attaching the leads properly in this sequence. Right upper limb, left upper limb, right lower limb, and left lower limb. Finally, attach the chest leads from V1 to V6, or sometimes named as C1 to C6. Ask the patient to relax, breathe normally and try not to move. Now let's understand the exact anatomical landmarks where the 10 leads have to be attached to your patient. For upper limbs, attach both the electrodes preferentially above the wrist. If not possible, it may be placed anywhere on the limbs, but avoid bony areas. And for the lower limbs, attach preferentially above the individual ankles. Similarly, if it's not possible, attach anywhere on lower limbs, but avoid the bony areas. For the lower limb leads, you can also choose medial aspect of the lower half of tibia as a landmark. Now the most important thing, the chest leads. Remember that we are using angle of Louis method for ECG placement. To locate the space of V1, locate the sternal notch. Angle of Louis is at the second rib. Now feel down the sternal border until you find the fourth intercostal space. V1 is placed at the right of the sternal border and V2 at the exact left of it. Let me show you again. Palpate the jugular notch. Now descend down until you feel a ridge-like structure. That is the angle of Louis. From there, move slightly to the left, find the sternal border and begin to descend. First of all you'll locate the second intercostal space. Descend another rib down, and thid would be the third intercostal space. Move your hand down one more rib then there you are, at the fourth intercostal space. Place V1 right there, and V2 to the left. At this moment, you are done with V1 and V2. So let's proceed to the next leads. As a rule, Place V4 before V3, in the 5th intercostal space. Place it along the mid-clavicular line. As if drawing a line from the center of the patient's clavicle. Now V3 should be placed directly between V2 and V4. V5 is placed between V4 and V6. And V6 has to be placed over the 5th intercostal space. Along the mid-axillary line. 
Just note that V4, V5 and V6 will come in the same horizontal line, in the fifth intercostal space. And finally, you're good to go. Document your ECG, check quality of the printout, and then, if you are happy, disconnect the leads. If you're not satisfied, then repeat the recording, until you are. Once done, remove all the electrodes and discard them. We have successfully completed the procedure to obtain an ECG. It's time to dive into the interpretation of this report. Every graph is a relation between its axis, horizontal one called the x-axis, and the vertical line called the y-axis. ECG is also a graph. Hence it's important to know the axis along which an ECG is plotted. The x-axis of an ECG represents time in meters per second. The y-axis or the vertical axis represents voltage in millivolts. There are two kinds of squares or boxes. This one is a large square. And the one inside it is called as a small square. You can see that every large square has five small squares, both horizontally and vertically. Note that length and width of each small square is one millimeter. This point will act as a foundation for all of our further calculations. Okay, so you would always see this written on any ECG report, but what is this? This is the paper output speed. Paper output speed is the rate at which the ECG machine produces a trace. The standard paper output speed is 25 millimeters per second. Let's have a quick look again. Every small square is 1 millimeter long and 1 millimeter wide. And there are 5 small squares in one large square. Lastly, that the ECG paper strip runs at 25 millimeters per second. Kindly remember this for time being and pay attention to the calculations that follow. Now we know that the speed is 25 millimeters per second, and each small square is of 1 millimeter, so in every second, the ECG report would cover 25 millimeters which means 25 small squares, hence the time for each small square would be 1 by 25, which is 0.04 seconds. Similarly, time for every large square would be 0.04 into 5, that is 0.20 seconds. I hope, now onwards you will never get confused and would always remember that every small square is 0.04 seconds, and one large square is of 0.20 seconds. In the same way, if we look at the y-axis, one small square represents 0.1 millivolts, so one large square would be 0.5 millivolts, and two large squares would be 1 millivolt. Now, let us quickly discuss about waves, segments and intervals. These are the five waves of an ECG, P, Q, R, S, and T. The P wave is produced as the electrical impulse travels through the atrias, causing them to contract. The P wave corresponds to atrial depolarization. One third of the wave represents right atrial depolarization, while two thirds shows left atrial depolarization. This is because left atrium is thicker than the right. As you can see, P wave is above this line, hence P is a positive wave. Remember that P wave is most prominent at lead 2 and V1. However, P is biphasic at V1, hence it could possibly be negative at V1, otherwise it's always positive. After P wave, the impulse then passes through the AV node, producing a flat section on an ECG known as PR segment. The PR segment is flat because no current is flowing through the cardiac muscle cells. PR segment is followed by ventricular depolarization. It is denoted by QRS complex. It's a combination of three graphical deflections, Q wave which is a negative wave, plus a positive deflection, called the R wave, followed by another negative deflection known as the S wave. The impulses remain unchanged for a moment as the ventricles remain depolarized. This gives rise to another flat section, called the ST segment. After that ECG shows final positive deflection, the T wave. T wave represents ventricular repolarization. There is no separate waves for the atrias getting repolarized because the atrial musculature is not thick enough to produce a separate wave. An interval is wave plus the next segment. So PR interval is P wave plus the PR segment. And similarly, QT interval is QRS complex, plus the ST segment. I hope you liked part 1 of this ECG series, please subscribe and stay tuned, and please click the bell icon, so that you're notified for the upcoming parts.